So Thailand gets about 30 million visitors a year, but most of them go to the same places. And it's actually quite easy to go off the beaten track. As well as that, if you go between May and November, then even the popular places can be quite quiet. I went to many of these places I'm going to talk about, and there are some tourists there, but because there are not so many, it's really easy to get away from them and do your own thing. If we look at Thailand here, this is the top of Thailand. This part is a lot of hills in the north. And then to the east of Bangkok, you've got islands. And then you've got islands in the south on the east coast and on the west coast. If you zoom in to the north of Thailand, then you can see there are really many national parks. One here, 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 here. And a lot of these are quite beautiful, untouched and not many people go to them. If you come down and look at the islands, then the first place I want to look at is down here near the Malaysian border. A lot of people go to Phuket and Krabi. Some people go to Koh Lanta, but a lot less people come down here to these islands. And there are actually a lot of islands here. If we zoom in, then you've got quite a big island here. This is about 20 kilometers tall you've got some islands here and over to the west here this is one island that i only heard of about the last four or five years that's getting popular it's called Kolipi or lipe i'm not sure and that's getting quite popular but it's in the middle of some other islands which there are actually no accommodation on some of these so if we look at a satellite map then you can really see that the these are not built up at all whatsoever. You've got trees in the middle, covered in trees, and you've got beaches on the outside, but absolutely no accommodation, nobody living there. Let's look at this first one then, Tarutau Island. And I've not been here, I've only been down as far as Koh Lanta. But if we look at the pictures, then you've got really white sand, nobody on these beaches, most of them and look really beautiful so if there's no accommodation you could still get there quite easily from Kolipe. This other one here Korawi is pretty much the same and we've got a map here you can see there are a lot of little islands as well all around the area so you could stay at Kolipe and then travel around these islands and there aren't that many people who stay at Kolipe so there'll be even less people who go around to these. The second place I want to look at is Khao Sok. I went there a couple of months ago and it's a really nice area. It's north of Phuket. If we zoom in here, I'm going to go back to the map so you can see. It's actually a national park all around this area and there aren't that many roads going into it. If you go into the actual town of Khao Sok here, then you can walk into this national park here or you can go across here. There's a big lake and I'll show you some images in a minute, but you can actually drive along here. And this is what we did. We drove up here. I hired a car from Phuket and then you can get into this area here and then you can go off on a boat into this lake. We went about this far I think somewhere here but you can actually go a lot further and I saw a pin on the map somewhere I'm not sure where it is now but there's a cave up here somewhere there weren't actually that many people I was surprised probably saw five or six other boats when I went on this lake let's have a look at some pictures of that so this is the lake and as you can see really beautiful you've got these limestone cliffs and some accommodation here that you can stay overnight. It was quite remote, so you wouldn't want to stay too many nights here. Uh, there's not much to do on them. We did get a canoe. We canoed off into some nearby parts of the huts here. And there are different types of accommodation. There are some really basic huts and also some luxurious ones. So just some more pictures here. These are mostly pictures of the lake, but you can go into the national park and it is a big national park. And 
I didn't do it. I only went up here for about three days. So we just spent the time around Khao Sok and this lake here. But there are some roads. If you carry on further north, there are some roads that you can just get into the park here. And there are actually some other national parks here with a different name. And also one just down here. So plenty of places to see. Khao Sok, there were quite a few tourists. But around these areas, I didn't see so many. The next place I want to look at is going up to east of Bangkok. Let's go up to where Bangkok is first. If you go east, you've got Pattaya, which is very busy. That's where I am now. Then you've got Koh Samet, which is a nice place to go, but it does get quite busy in the high season. You've got Koh Chang. Less people go here, and that is quite nice. But if you carry on from there, you've got even more islands. And I've not been to those. I went to Ko Chang. I hired a car and went across on the ferry. And that was nice. There's a really beautiful place at the end here. You've got huts that are, again, on the water. And that's really beautiful. I think it's just the end here of Ko Chang. But you've got all these islands off there that I've not been to. And actually, to be honest, I would never even knew they were there. I thought Ko Chang was the furthest one. So I looked at a few of these on Google Images. And I think this is the first one. So this is Ko Mac. From Bangkok, this would probably take you... Let's have a look. Pattaya is two hours. Down here is about four hours. So it's probably about eight hours drive from Bangkok and then you'd have to get over here somehow you could probably go over from Ko Chang to some of these let's have a look at the pictures so some really nice islands again not many people on them and if we look here you've got some accommodation by the look of it or at least some houses but most of it has just trees again some really nice pictures here showing what it's like. Here's a map of the actual island. So looks like you can stay on that island, but it is also got a lot of nature on it. And here's another one showing that there's some ferries that you can go in. Looks like you go in from the mainland then to get out to these islands. So that is Ko Mac and the other one here, Ko Kut. And I just looked at an article on it and it says here, we're going out on a limb to declare Ko Kut one of the most beautiful islands we've seen in Thailand in over two decades of travel to the kingdom. So they really recommend it. And I think there are so many beautiful islands here that people just go to the ones they've heard of, but there are a lot more. I don't know exactly how many islands in Thailand, but when you zoom in, you can always find more. Like here, even around Koh Mak, you've got three more islands, another one there, four islands around it. Another smaller island with even some more smaller islands around it. So really easy. You can always hire a boat. You'll always be able to hire a boat from one of these and go to these other islands. So the next places I'm going to talk about are further up north. And the first one is Pechabun. So let's have a look where it is first of all. It's north of Bangkok. What I did, I hired a car. And I hired it probably about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I think and got up here maybe it took five hours in the pouring rain i remember and i got up to pechabun there's not much actually in the town of pechabun but the place to go is this national park just above it and the road goes up here you can't see the road on here I'm pretty sure it goes up to this part i can't see the road here but it's a really winding road let's have a look at some images of it and it's this road here this goes from, I don't know whether it's sea level, but it goes from the bottom of the mountain and it goes all the way up to the top here. And there are some people camping. You can also stay in a hut, which is what we did up there. And the good thing is in the morning, the clouds are below you. You can just about see it here that the clouds are below. Uh, and this image here, you can see. So when you wake up, you get this view. You're actually above the clouds and really spectacular it's also got a national park next to it 
and I can't actually see I, th I think it's probably here that I'm talking about and you can go through this national park but I can't see the road on it ah here's the campground okay so it's here and there is a road must be this one going through the national park so it goes through there and it probably it's this area that it's a big plateau and a, it's a cliff drop I actually couldn't go near the edge of it I don't like heights but it, that's really nice as well over there so this area is really nice and there's actually three national parks up here you've got the one either side here and then you can go up here towards Loy and you've got another national park up here so I recommend all this area I really didn't see many foreigners I think when I stayed in this place up here where they got camping I only saw one other foreigner and then when I went off for the the day through the national park I didn't see any so it is quite popular with Thai people to go up here camping but not with foreigners so I recommend there and the next place I want to look at is to the west of Chiang Mai so let's go on the map first of all Chiang Mai is right up here in the north near Myanmar or Burma and also near Laos and if we go west of Chiang Mai a lot of people go to Pai this is a really nice road going through here this is quite a winding road and it's nice Pai is nice it's the area you've got all the healed tribes this is the old golden triangle where they used to smuggle drugs between Burma and Thailand and it's got the long neck tribe over this area but I actually think that the road from Pai to Mae Hon Song is even more spectacular it goes up higher and then around Mae Hon Song is really good you've got hot springs and you've got some lovely views on this road as you go through here it's really a winding road let's have a look at some images of it then and you've got roads like this just going up through the hills lots of spectacular views and really nice scenery around here and also not so many people go to Mahon Song you get a lot of people going to Pai but they don't really carry on and if you've got your own transport what I actually did I did a it's called the Mahon Song loop and you come down this is the highest mountain in Thailand here but around here it was nice to stay in this area because there aren't many people doing it there's no electricity we were having food that we were just cooking over a coal fire and it was quite remote around here so it's nice to do that you can actually stay in places at the bottom of the mountain here uh, I'm not sure exactly where but somewhere around here and then we carried on I think it took about a, maybe a week to maybe just over a week around here I forget exactly but it wasn't so good going from Chiang Mai down to here there wasn't really much to see but once you pass the mountain here then this was good you got hot springs up here and I think the best part was between Mei Hong Song and Pai so the last place I want to recommend is Chiang Rai and this is right up in the north and I want to talk about above Chiang Rai it's actually quite a nice road going between Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai it goes through these national parks so I'd recommend that as well but where I wanted to talk about was to the northwest of Chiang Rai you've got tea plantations and I actually went on a road I think it must be up here which follows the border of Thailand and Myanmar and there was no one else I didn't see any other tourists up around here it was actually quite difficult to get to you had to wind your way through here and then we got stopped by the military and the car searched and photos taken and things like that because there's a lot of smuggling goes on here but then as we went through you can see they've got like bamboo fortifications but it's up on the hills and you can see into Myanmar and you can see how poor and underdeveloped it is looking into Myanmar but we went across this or along this road here and then down into the town here 
you can actually cross over into Myanmar over here. There's a checkpoint, but we didn't do that. But I recommend this area over here. And what I actually do, I just look at a map sometimes and I just look for places that are green. And they are quite remote and quite adventurous to get out there. So there was these roads going through here and I decided to try going through these. I didn't see any other tourists along here whatsoever. If we look at some images of that, then you can see here it's up in this area. And this is what it looks like. Not many people around and lots of nice things to see. Tea plantations and lots of countryside up here. Quite poor areas and poor housing. So those are the places that I recommend. But all you really need to do is to get the map of Thailand and just zoom in somewhere. If you go to one of the main areas like Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, to even Bangkok or somewhere in the south, you find lots of national parks all over the place. And just zoom into one. See if you see lots of hills like this. You can see that it's quite mountainous. And that normally means it's pretty good. Try and find a road that's going through it. And you can just go along it and just have an adventure. I did, I think it was about 800 kilometers when I went up here. I just went straight up here, then I went all around this area and then came back down to Bangkok. And I think that was only about five or six days I did that in. With my trip up here from Phuket, that was only, I think I hired the car for four days and went around that area. And when I went over to this area east of Bangkok, Ko Chang, I think I hired it for about a week, the car. So you can do a lot. You just hire a car and you can even do all this by motorbike as well and go off exploring. Music.